you know, there's still time for the young lady that you brought in to reverse what has happened. Yeah, I've already did all the talking I can. Well, I want you to remember a website. I want you to think of, my name's Tony, by the way. Tyler. Tyler. Mm -hmm. It's a website. It's abortionpillreversal.com. Mm -hmm. And your girlfriend, wife, whoever it is that you brought in um, could reverse what she has started. Okay. Now, Tyler. Yeah. Tyler. I also want to let you know this. My church and I, we are willing to provide any financial support you might need. That's good. Um, housing. Um, I, have a, I have a spare room in my home that you're welcome to. And if you and your girlfriend are not ready to raise the baby, and nothing wrong with that, if you're not ready to raise the baby, either myself personally or someone in our church will adopt the child. All right. That's always good to... Thanks for talking to you. Well, now, but Tyler, I want you to know this, though. Because I've honestly, genuinely, sincerely offered you every kind of conceivable help. If you and your girlfriend go through this, it's not because you have no other choice. And exactly. it's not because you have no other option. It's because you have no other desire. Exactly. So what, Tyler, it's what do you... Her, it's her body. That's the only thing well, I look at it. Now, so, Tyler... That's the only thing I support okay. about. That's the only All right. thing I support. It's so, her body. Let me speak to that. Do you believe that you and me and your girlfriend should be able to do whatever we want with our body. Yeah. You do, okay. So let me challenge that thinking a little bit, all right? Do I have, um, do I have the right to use my body to harm you? And I never would think of it in a million years. I mean, do I, do I, fetus could harm her body. Well, hang on, let, let's, let's stick so. with the first point. Before we move off the first point, the primary point, your primary argument, do I have the right to do whatever I want with my body in reality? Do I have the right to cause you harm? No. Right. And, and I agree. Uh -huh. It would be absolutely wrong. Do you believe that a mother of a three-month-old child has the right to drown her baby in the bathtub to do what she wants with her body? She needs help. That's but does she have the right? No, she doesn't. Okay. But... So the idea that we all have the right to do what we want with our own body isn't actually true. Regarding your girlfriend, uh, girlfriend, wife? Just a friend. Friend, okay. Regarding your, regarding your friend's child, your friend's child is not part of her body. Your friend's child is inside her body. Yeah. Your friend's child has his or her own DNA, uh -huh. his or her own blood type, uh -huh. his or her own body. Okay? That is true. Right? So, why would it be okay for a woman to conceivably do what she wants with her body to kill her unborn child, but she wouldn't have the same right to do what she wants with her own body to kill her three-month-old child? I don't know. Well, I, Tyler, exactly. no, I, I think you I do know. Oh, I know. I don't, I'm not for it. I'm not for abortions at all, but... Did you bring her? No, she brought herself. I was just in moral support. Moral support, okay. I'm a friend. I'm all right. going to be so, here no matter what. Even okay. Don't, so. Believe her ways. All right, so Tyler, if if you and I were good friends, uh -huh. we'd known each other for a long time. Uh -huh. And you found out that I have been arrested for murdering three young girls after raping them and burying them in shallow graves along the Iowa River. Uh -huh. That'd be horrendous. Are you my friend no matter what and you're going to morally support me? Maybe not your ways, but before that happened. Oh, oh I'm, not, I'm not talking about you. You find this out, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what your friend is in there to do. Mm -hmm. You know that she's not in there exercising a right over her own body. Right. She's exercising her will over someone else's body. Correct. Okay. You say yourself that you don't agree uh -huh. with what she's doing. Uh -huh. So are you actually giving moral support or immoral support to what she's doing? Because I would, because I would contend that if I was found out to be some kind of serial killer and child molester, uh -huh. and you to say, "Hey, I'm going to stick by Tony no matter what. I'm going to morally support him. I'm going to join." In fact, the next time he does it, I'm going to join him. I'm not going to participate. No, look, look, hang on, and I and Tyler, I don't assume for a second you would. Okay, all right. This is this is a hypothetical. 
and I'm making it intentionally ridiculous to make the point. No, All right, no, I'm using it, hyperbole it, it, oh, to make the point. Make, it does make if, sense. if I told you, Tyler, there's this seven-year-old girl, and I want her, and I'm going to rape her, and I don't want to go to jail, so I'm going to slit her throat, and I'm going to bury her in a shallow grave. Right. Tyler, I know you don't want anything to do with that, right. and I know you don't agree, but will you just come and support me while I do it? No. Okay. My friend, that's what's happening here. Exactly. Okay. No, now, this is where it gets even more important, okay? Regardless of what your religious or spiritual beliefs may be, you and I, Tyler, how old are you? I'm 28. 28, okay. My, my oldest is 30. So you're young enough to be my son. I'm 53, <laughs> okay? You and I, different people, different generations, mm -hmm. different backgrounds, different skin tone, different nationality, probably. Mm -hmm. We're different. But, but you and I, Tyler, have both been created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. You and I are image bearers of our Creator. Definitely. And as such, He has written His law on our heart. You and I both know it's wrong to lie, not because mommy and daddy told us, mm -hmm. not because our school teacher said it was wrong, certainly not because society says so, society thinks it's fine. Mm -hmm. You and I know it's wrong to lie because we were created in the image of God, and the God who made us is not a liar. You and I know, know that sexual immorality is wrong, mm -hmm. whether heterosexual or homosexual or whatever title we give it. Definitely. We know that sex outside of marriage is wrong. Definitely. We know that not because society says so, and maybe not because our parents taught us that. Maybe our parents were fornicators and adulterers. Definitely. We know that's wrong mm -hmm. because we were created in the image of God, and the God who made us is not a fornicator or an adulterer. Definitely. You and I know that hatred is wrong. Mm -hmm. It would be wrong for you to for me to hate you. Mm -hmm. It would be wrong for you to hate me. Exactly. And God sees hatred as murder. The word of God says, whoever does not love his brother is a murderer. Okay. Murder begins with hatred in the heart, moves to the mind where it formulates a plan, and then to the hand where it carries out the act. But in God's eyes, the murder began in the heart. Exactly. Right? You know that's wrong, I know that's wrong. Mm -hmm. because, for the same reason, as exactly. different as we are. Definitely. Because we were both created in the image of God, and the God who made us is not a murderer. So the word of God says, Tyler, that when you and I die and stand before God, you and I will be without excuse. We're not gonna be able to stand before our creator, whom we know. We're not gonna be able to stand before him with an excuse for the crimes, the sins that we've committed, the times that we've broken his law and thought, word, or deed. Because he's written it on our heart. He's given us a conscience. Because God is good, because he's holy and righteous and just, he's going to punish our sin. All of it. The sins we love to commit and make excuses for, and the sins we're willing to point at someone else and say that's wrong. Exactly. It's going to punish all of it. And the punishment that God has determined for sin is eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I tell you that, Tyler, because I love you as my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I, I don't tell you that with judgment in my heart. I don't tell, tell you that with anger in my heart, with no hatred in my heart. I don't want you to perish in your sin. Right. Friends who love their friends warn their friends when their friends are in danger. Doesn't that make sense? Definitely. So I'm not coming to you with condemnation, Definitely. but I am coming to you as a friend with a warning. Mm -hmm. Now the good news is this same God who is angry with the wicked every day, that's you and me, mm -hmm. um, who will judge the world in righteousness, is the same God who is loving, merciful, gracious, and kind. Mm -hmm. And Tyler, he showed that great love 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin, just as the prophet Isaiah predicted more than 700 years before he was actually born. To marry that young girl, an unplanned pregnancy, no doubt. Right. right? To be conceived, have her child conceived by the Holy Spirit. God in the flesh, fully God and fully man, and without sin. He lived a perfect life for some cradle to grave for some 33 years, mm -hmm. a life that you and I have already failed to live today. Right. Then he voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a horrific bloody death he did not deserve. Exactly. To take upon himself the punishment sinful people like you and me rightly deserve. Mm -hmm. Then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. Now you're nodding in agreement, and I appreciate that. Oh, I definitely agree. Okay, but you need to know this. The Word of God says that the demons believe and tremble. Satan believes everything I just said to you. 
Satan is not going to spend a moment in heaven because he gives intellectual assent to the truth. All right. Jesus even said, you, you praise me with your lips, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. See, what God requires of you and me and all people everywhere, your girlfriend, my friends, the escorts, um, Trey in the white car, all of us, what he requires of us, uh, Tyler, is not simply intellectual assent with the truth and then living our life however we want. What he requires of us is repentance and faith. Jesus' first sermon was repent and believe the gospel. And God does not negotiate with sinners. Definitely. It's not, look, if you and I walk into a courtroom, we might be able to convince a judge to give us probation, to give us a fine in lieu of jail time, knock off our sentence, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. But in the Supreme Court of the universe, he's already found us guilty. Exactly. Because we've already sinned. The day of judgment, Tyler, it's not a court trial where we stand before God and say, yes, I admit to the wrong, but here's all the good things I've done. That's like me going into a courtroom, having broken the law and saying, your honor, I'm guilty, but I washed the windows on your Mercedes and here's a hundred bucks. Let's forget the whole thing. The Bible says God will not be bribed. Okay. What he requires of us is that to turn from our sin and by faith and by faith alone, receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Exactly. And the promise, Tyler, is that if God causes that miraculous work in you, if He causes you to be born again to a living hope, He'll take a heart of stone mm -hmm. and He'll give you a heart of flesh. Okay. You'll begin to love the things that God loves. You'll begin to hate the things that God hates, namely your own sin. Mm -hmm. And He will forgive your sin and He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. Not because you're good, not because I'm good, because we're not good. Mm -hmm. God's standard of goodness is moral perfection. You and I don't let me measure up to it. Yeah. That's why we need a savior, uh -huh. all right? At the same time though, God is not gonna turn a blind eye to sin. And having offered you through the presentation of the gospel, the sacrifice of his son on behalf of your sin, He's not going to just turn a blind eye as you trample his blood under your feet and go on and living as if Tyler were God. You need Christ. Mm -hmm, definitely. As much as I do, you need Christ. Always. It wasn't Christ who brought you here today. Exactly. It was your sin. Uh -huh. And even your friendship, there's sin in your friendship, and let me explain why. Okay? Because I know that sounds very offensive on the face of it. All right? But think about it this way. By bringing her here to support your friend, you're actually sharing, showing more care for your friendship than for your friend. Yeah. Because you're not warning your friend that she's offending a holy God. You're not warning your friend that she's going to be held accountable for the murder of her baby. You're not warning your friend that she's at a much higher risk of suicide tomorrow mm -hmm. than she was yesterday. Exactly. So you're not actually supporting your friend. You're protecting the friendship. And that's selfish. It is. Very. So knock it off. <laughs> right. Go back sure. in there. Look, if she makes the right moral decision today, if you make the right moral decision today, that will not make you right with God. If you both save the baby's life and with tears of joy drive out of here and get T-boned in the intersection and all three of you die, you're gonna stand before God and face his wrath for your sin. Your morality will not save you, okay? What you need is Christ. You need Christ. Well, I gotta go put some money in my, but I definitely took in all the words that you said and thanks. I appreciate your time, Tyler. Definitely. God bless you. Yeah.